Thomas reached his full speed. Bertie tried hard, but Thomas was too fast. Whistling triumphantly, he plunged into the tunnel, leaving Bertie toiling far behind. We've done it! We've done it! panted Thomas. We've done it, hooray! We've done it, hooray! chanted Annie and Clarabelle as they whooshed into the last station. Ahead of him was a very big puddle. My! This is the biggest puddle ever! Here I come! Splish! Splash! Splash! Then there was trouble. Muddy water flew high into the air and splooshed down all over Alicia Botti and Sir Topham Hatt. Thomas! Thomas screeched to a stop and reversed slowly. He saw that he had splish, splash, sploshed Alicia Botti and Sir Topham Hatt. Cinders and ashes! Look what you've done to Miss Botti. She's soaked. Also, Thomas, I hear from the dairy manager that you ruined the flour and strawberries for Miss Botty's grand tea. This is a disaster. He fussed into the station where Gordon was waiting. Hurry up, you, said Gordon. Hurry yourself, replied Thomas. Gordon began making his plan. Yes, said Gordon, I will. And almost before the coaches had stopped moving, Gordon reversed quickly and was coupled to the train. Get in quickly, please, he whistled. Thomas usually pushed behind the big trains to help them start, but he was always uncoupled first. This time Gordon started so quickly they forgot to uncouple Thomas. Gordon's chance had come. Come on, come on, puffed Gordon to the coaches. The train went faster and faster, too fast for Thomas. He wanted to stop, but he couldn't. Peep, peep, stop, stop. Hurry, 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 laughed Gordon. You can't get away, you can't get away, laughed the coaches. Poor Thomas was going faster than he had ever gone before. He was out of breath and his wheels hurt him, but he had to go on. I shall never be the same again, he thought sadly. My wheels will be quite worn out. At last they stopped at a station. Look, call some boys. There's a new tank engine. Oh, it's only Gordon back to front. Hello, call Thomas. Playing tank engines? Sensible engine. Take my advice. Scrap your tender and have a nice bunker. Gordon said nothing. Even James laughed when he saw him. Take care, his Gordon. You might stick too. No fear, chuckled James. I'm not so fat as you. I mustn't stick, thought James. He stopped on just the right place to balance the table. It could now swing easily. Gordon arrived in time to see everything. James turned much too easily. The wind puffed him round like a top. He couldn't stop. Well, well, said Gordon, are you playing roundabouts? Poor James, feeling quite giddy, rolled off to the shed without a word. Then Henry came by, hissing as usual. Cheese! When Percy, Henry jumped and ran back to the shed. How beautifully you weased him, laughed Edward. I can't weesh like that. Oh, said Percy, that's nothing. You should hear them in the workshop. 
You have to wish loudly to make yourself heard. Percy opened his eyes. Gordon had stopped with Percy's buffers a few inches from his own. But Percy had begun to move. I won't stay here. I'll run away, he puffed. He went straight through Edward's station and was so frightened that he ran right up Gordon's hill without stopping. After that he was tired, but he couldn't stop. He had no driver to shut off steam and apply the brakes. I want to stop. I want to stop, he puffed. The man in the signal box saw Percy was in trouble, so he kindly set the switch. Percy puffed wearily onto a nice empty siding, ending in a big bank of earth. He was too tired now to care where he went. I want to stop. I want to stop. I have stopped, he puffed thankfully. He rushed into a tunnel thinking how clever he was, but there was trouble ahead. Cinders and ashes, said Thomas. I'm stuck. And he was. Back, Thomas, back, said his driver. Thomas tried, but his wheels spun and he couldn't move. The conductor went back for help, while everyone else tried to dig the snow away. But as fast as they dug, more snow slipped down until Thomas was nearly buried. Oh, my wheels and coupling rods! I shall have to stop here till I'm frozen! What a silly engine I am! And Thomas began to cry. At last a bus came to rescue the passengers. And then, who should come to Thomas's rescue but Terence? Snow never worries him. He pulled the empty coaches away, then came back for Thomas. Thomas's wheels were clear, but still spun when he tried to move. Terence tugged and slipped, and slipped and tugged, and at last dragged Thomas clear of the snow, ready for the journey home. Percy looked at the lorry. What's this lump of steaming scrap iron? He teased. I'll be back, replied the lorry, so you can wipe that silly smile off your smoke box. Ha, said Percy, and wished him loudly. Then Butch, the breakdown vehicle, arrived. He was towing the lorry from the flour mill. What happened, asked Toby's driver. He was overloaded with flour, came the reply, and he broke down. <laughs> Not very useful now, are you, said Toby. Arr, replied the lorries. Then James whistled excitedly. They're bringing in the third lorry on a barge. What happened to that one? James asked. Stupid lorry was reversing and fell straight into the sea, said the tow truck man. The 1920s. Big City Port was the biggest harbor in the world. It was a time of change and great opportunity. Nobody knew it better than the hard-working tugs, whose strength and big hearts made them popular with everybody from tramp steamers to ocean liners. Important jobs in the port often kept them working night and day. My tugs, the Star Fleet, were no exception. I had three harbor tugs, OJ, a Palestine, Warrior, and Big Mac. A railway tug, Top Hat, one little switcher, <laughs> ten cents. And Hercules, my ocean-going tug. 
They were a good crew, striving to be the best in the port. Not always succeeding, but proud of their work. In the morning, Hercules had an important contract up the coast. So, I was to lose his great strength on the very day I was to need it most. Well, Hercules, the Duchess is coming this afternoon. That's a pity you won't be there. I know. I really hate to disappoint the Duchess. Yeah, I'm looking for a switcher called Sunshine. You ain't seen him. Afraid not, old darling. Yeah. Well, he'd better show soon. I've a lot of work to do before this afternoon. I'll be back tonight. Oh, and ten cents. Look after the Duchess for me, won't you? Ten cents? Has that switcher found you yet? No, not yet. Oh, he's looking for you. Oh, I'll better go look for him. Yeah, we'll watch you in future. Yeah, I was uh, I was looking for ten cents, uh, sir. Yeah, well, you just found him. Oh, I'm sunshine, sir. That's good to meet you. Come on, let's get to work. The Starfleet's docking an ocean liner this afternoon, and if we get a move on, we'll be finished in time to watch. Yes, yeah. No, no, look, sunshine. You only call a captain star, sir. I'm just ten cents, okay? Yes. Uh, sure thing. Ten cents. Forget about magic. It's safe inside you. Appearances, sunshine. You know what Captain Star says? Red sky at night, sailors delight. Red sky in the morning, sailors warning. Oh, it's, it's bad weather coming then. Yeah, strong winds on the way. It'll be here soon. Hmm? Get a move on, you two. The storm flags are out. Aye, we know, Jay. We're just saying. Well, then we? get on with that. Hercules is already out answering a maid aid. When you deliver that oil, bring in Scuttlebutt Pete. He's dredging in the bay. Aye, aye, sir. Yeah, we're off now. There'll be some extra jobs to batten down before the storm hits the harbour. Come on, sunshine. No time for daydreaming. No, me. Good morning, Zebedee. What's good about it? Light wind's underway. Yeah, it's going to be a lot of work to do today. Oh, hey. 
What's going on? He's cut right across us. Yeah, he would. Just when we're in a hurry. Come on. Oi, come on. Hey, look how many he's torn. Yeah, four. He likes to show he's as strong as any Z-Stack tug. Oh, look. Look, he's losing one. Hey, you, you, you think we'd better tell him? He, he hasn't seen it. Yeah, I suppose we should. Oi, Zebedee. I'm fast as my right away. You'll have to wait. You've lost one of your barges. It's going adrift. You have me young. Oh. Yeah, don't worry. I'll hold it till you secure it. Don't interfere. I can manage. Oh, so yourself. Just off into the helpful, that's all. We don't need anything startups as to offer. Do it your own way, then. Hey, uh, uh, wait. Uh, hold it for me, will you? Uh, thanks. Docking a liner can be a hazardous business for tugs, especially with cross currents and the danger of this high wind. Usually the liner can assist, but the Princess Alice couldn't do much due to the damage to her rudder. With all their expertise and experience, the Star Tug team were finding her very difficult to keep under their control. What's happening back there? Come on, stars! She's not responding! Her duties, the wind's too strong! I can't hold her much longer! The Zeds were out to beat the stars, not to help them beat the Zed stacks. <laughs> Hello, Mr. Cuba, sir. Well, 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 it's Sibby back again. Keep doing as Johnny Cuba tells you, and you'll come to no harm, you with me? Uh, yes, Mr. Cuba, I hate the wind Right, stopping. there's a few other little things I want you to do for me before we go. Now listen, this is what... Oh, I oh, it's Hercules! Hello, what's going on here? Oh, yes, Ebedee. And where are you taking our friend, the well-known Johnny Cuba, eh? Oh, well, I, uh, um... What's it to you, Star? We know you, Johnny Cuba. Up to no good. We'll hand him over to the authorities, Ebedee. They may like to have a word with him. No, you don't. Well, wait a minute. The gangster tried to back out, but collided with Zebedee. You will not go anywhere. Just to make sure Zebedee rammed into Johnny Cuba, trapping him against the quayside. Well done, Zebedee, my dear. Come on, let's take him in. I'll break your stack for this one. I can't hold Johnny Cuba! The authorities did hold Johnny Cuba and gave official thanks to Zebedee and Hercules. Percy. No, no, not by the smoke on my chimney chim chim. I'll chuff and I'll puff and I'll break your door in. Oh dear, exclaimed Thomas. It's getting late. Oh, oh, I'd no idea. Oh, I, I must find Annie and Clarabelle. All the lights went off. What a marvelous sight awaited Mrs. Kindly. Well done, said Sir Topham Hatt. I'm really proud of you all. Mrs. Kindly especially thanked the smaller engines. Thomas and Toby are old friends, she said. And now, Percy, you are my friend too. Percy was very pleased. Three cheers for Mrs. Kindly, he called. Beep, beep, beep. They all whistled. We wish 
wish you a Merry Christmas, we wish you a Merry Christmas, we wish you a Merry Christmas and a Happy New Year. Thomas the Tank Engine and his friends thought it was the best Christmas ever, and Mrs. Kindly could think of nowhere she would rather live than here, with them on the island of Sodor. ...wouldn't switch to Spencer's line and was coupled up. Then, they set off. See? said Gordon. We're right on time! Spencer was embarrassed. What do you think of Spencer now? whispered Thomas. Too much puff and not enough steam! Well John Gordon, said Sir Topham Hatt, you are the fastest engine on Shodor. I know that, muttered Gordon. Then another coupling snapped. Rosie passed Stepney in a siding. Stepney was waiting to puff onto the main line. The points changed. Stepney blew his whistle loudly. He's whistling at my fun fur special, thought Rosie proudly. But Stepney was whistling because the truck of sugar was now rolling towards him. Stepney was covered in pink sugar from funnel to footplate. But Rosie didn't know. She puffed proudly on.